Influence Church exists to help you know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and influence your world. To be honest with you, in the last few years, I am glad to see the church starting talking about mental health. And it's a topic that is becoming more uh, common in some of the church messages. But if you grew up like me uh, in a church uh, that they will probably teach or say something like, we don't talk about mental health in church. If you gave your life to Jesus, if you gave your life to Christ, everything is good. Forget about it. We don't talk about mental health. I grew up in a church that when we were talking about mental health, we were talking about crazy people that are locked up in an institution. Mental health is not just that. Mental health is more than that. And this is something that we are going to unpack for the next seven Sundays, seven weeks. We are going to cover this topic of peace of mind. So, Many of us grew up thinking that if Jesus saved you and he redeemed you, if he will fill you, when he's filling you with the Holy Ghost power, all things are good. Everything is fine, don't worry about. And while this is true, it's also incomplete in my opinion. I know that what I'm going to say is going to make some of you uncomfortable, uh, you might even say that I'm a heretic. But just because Jesus saved you doesn't mean that he fixes every area of your life instantly. He can create miracles in your life. He can heal instantly. He can create small miracles in your life that are taking place instantly. But most of the time, we are living in this world and we have to go through a process. See, when Jesus saved me, when I gave my life to Christ, I didn't walk up with kind of a six-pack abs like this. Like, you know, I've been serving God for, I told you, for 30-some years, and I'm still looking for those abs. It's not there. When you are born again, it's not like your credit score magically going to 850. When you give your life to uh, uh, Christ, it's not just miracle happen and your hair is getting thicker. Or your boss that you have issues with is changed just because you give your life to Christ. No, we are still struggling with some of those in our lives. And just because you are a Christian doesn't mean instantly mental health in our lives. Let me be upfront with you. I'm not an expert in mental health. Uh, I didn't go to school. I didn't become one of those counselors that I do think the world needs in today's world. Uh, but I did research. I did study. And I want to come from an angle perspective of human, uh, human perspective, but also as a pastor, I'm going to come to this uh, topic from a spiritual perspective also. So, Mental health, if we are thinking about mental health, it's including emotional well-being. Also, it's including psychological well-being. And of course, it's including social well-being. See, mental health is not just a static. It's not just something that is completely separate of our lives. It's just involved. It is involved in every area of our lives. See, mental health affects how we think, which is going to show in how we feel and will affect how we act. It's everything in the mental health. How we handle stress, how we are making choices, how we are bouncing back from difficult times or we are not. Everything has to do with our mental health. And today, I want to address two big myths that we have in church about uh, mental health. Number one, mental health, as I said earlier, is that Christians shouldn't struggle with mental health. Probably you heard that multiple times, many times. Christians shouldn't battle anxiety, depression, burnt out. 
And if you do, probably some of you heard this, it's your fault. Probably you don't have faith enough. Probably you didn't pray enough. Or if you pray a lot, maybe you didn't pray the, didn't pray the right things. And somehow it's turning to just be our fault for struggling with uh, mental health. Also, some in the churches used to say, well, if you struggle with mental health, it must be a sin in your life. You have to get away of that sin. You have to take that sin out of your life and everything will be okay. Everything will be perfect. Today, I want to show you that you can love Jesus and still fight depression. Today, I want to show you that uh, you can faithfully read God's word and still battle anxiety. You can attend church, you can sit in the front row, you can tithe, you can be involved and serve others, and still you might struggle overcome trauma that you probably had in your life. Today I'm going to look through some of the uh, heroes in the Bibles. And one of them is Elijah. I don't know if you read about Elijah, but he's a prophet of God that he, stand, uh, he stood down 800 false prophets of Baal. And one time, very shortly after that, he, uh, uh, during that uh, situation, he called fire from heaven and God answered him. I'm not sure about you, but this looks like he's on the top of the mountain. He's a prophet of God and miracles happened, right? But very shortly after that, he was so depressed that he wanted to die. David, a man after God's own heart, is facing Goliath. And if you read the story, David was a probably around 12 years old, a very tiny, teeny little boy, and Goliath was a huge giant. So probably uh, Goliath was uh, twice, if not three times his height. Probably Goliath was five times his uh, width, uh, uh, David's width. But David has this power to just come forward and say, like, who do, talking to Goliath, who do you think you are to challenge the army of the living God? And you know what? God gave David Goliath's life, and he won that battle. But David, a man after God's own heart, will find him struggling with depression and failures and anxiety and fears and so forth. And he is called the man after God's own heart. Another prophet, Jeremiah, to be honest with you, I do not want to be Jeremiah because Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. He was whining, crying all the time. For this reason, he was called like that. And he was bringing the word of God. He was God's messenger. But still, he struggled with loneliness, with insecurity, and actually, he cursed the day that he was born. I don't want to depress you, but I want to show you that dealing with mental health, it's okay. As long as we depend and we trust in God. Struggling mentally, most of Christians keep saying that you need more of God, you need more of God, you need more of God. And trust me, we all do need more of God. But also, we might need maybe more sleep. But also we might need maybe better friends that will help us overcome the struggles. We do need God, but also we might need a healthier diet in our lives. We might need to see a doctor because of hormone deficiency. Or we might have a chemical imbalance in our body. We might need counseling or therapy. Don't get me wrong. We need God in our life more and more but also we might need some of those, which, by the way, are not evil, as sometimes the church describes them. So, struggling doesn't mean you are not a good Christian. Struggling with mental health, in my opinion, means that you are human, 
that we are human. Second myth that I would like to cover today is that God doesn't care about your mental health. Have you ever looked recently to the world? Do you think God really cares about you and your mental health when there are so many wars and so many uh, struggles in the world? God is too busy with bigger problems. Do you think he has time for your struggle with your boss or with your lack of finances? Maybe uh, do you think he has time for your struggle with your wife or with your kids or maybe with your in-laws that drive you insane? Don't take it personal, <laughs> mom and dad. <laughs> you might start thinking that no, no one cares. You know what? God cares about your mental health. And if we are looking at the Psalms, Psalm is such an amazing and wonderful uh, um, uh, section of the Bible. Uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Lord, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And he saved those who are crushed in spirit. God is our refuge and our strength. He is ever-present help in our time of trouble. You look, read psalm after psalm after psalm, and you see that God really cares and he's there for you. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lay down in green pasture. He restores my soul, even if I walk through the valley of shadow of death. I will feel no evil. Because he is with me. His mercy and his goodness will follow me. Not just some days, not just every other days. His goodness and his mercy will follow me all of my days. God cares about your mental health. Just read the Psalms and you'll see it. But also go to the Psalms and see some people breaking down mentally. There are a lot of sound that you want on your coffee mug, that you want to just say, and every time you take a sip, you read that quote. Today, I want to show you some that you don't want on your coffee mug. Psalm 88 was written by uh, a guy named Heman. And it's weird that he man, I don't know why I'm going there, but he man was a man. And he was a Christian, admired Christian, respected uh, in the Bible. And he was very well known for some of his qualities, like he had great wisdom. And if I am putting up some of those uh, Bible verses, just for you to look if you want to uh, read more about uh, he man. He had great wisdom. Also, he had musical ability. This is a guy that maybe it's uh, uh, on your worship team, or he's leading songs, or he's praying, or he's on your band. He had musical abilities, and he was using those for praising God. Also, we can read in the Bible to find out that he had a lot of kids, and he was a very committed father, parenting, and good qualities. Also, we find out in uh, First Chronicle that he was serving the king, and he was a good servant of the king. This is a guy that is your uh, a deacon in the church, that is a guy you want to become like. Maybe uh, this is a, a Christian model, like uh, hopefully your pastor, and so on. So, This is a guy that you might want as your father-in-law, and so on. This is a man of God. But also, let me show you what he said in Psalm 88. This is a psalm that he wrote. Now, spoiler alert. This is one of the two psalms of all of the psalms that doesn't have a happy ending. A lot of times in the psalms, you see people whining and complaining, and at the end, they will say, but the Lord is faithful. This man of God says this, and wondering how many of you can relate. Psalm 88, 
verse 3. I am overwhelmed with troubles, and my life draws near to death. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like one without strength. Verse 5. I am set apart with the dead, like the slain who, who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, who are cut off from your care. Welcome to Influence Church, where we love to bring you uplifting messages. <laughs> but then we'll see something that he gets it right. And what he gets right is the very same thing that many of you get right. Because in the middle of the struggles, in the middle of the problem, in the middle of the anxiety and depression, you still find the time to go to church. You still find time to trust in God, to lean on him. You are doing the right thing in the middle of your despair struggles with your mental health. Mental health. When you turn to God, when you are becoming part of a Christian group, So, verse 13, we are jumping a few verses, he's saying this. But I cry to you for help, Lord. He's turning to God. In the morning, first thing that he does, my prayers come before you. And even though he turns to God, he keeps saying, why, Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me? And the last verse of this psalm, he is saying this. You have taken from me friend and neighbor. Darkness is my closest friend. This is how he's ending Psalm 88. This is something that probably you do not want on your coffee mug. This guy loved God. This guy served God. This guy is in the Bible. And you know what? I love that his story is written in the Bible. Because many of us, at some time in our life, related with this guy. And we thought we are not Christian enough. And we thought we don't love God enough. Because we are struggling with mental health. I love that it's here in the Bible, and I love that it's no happy ending. To show us that God is not afraid of our honesty, that he cares, that you might love him, and you might question him, that you might worship him, and you might hurt, and when you hurt, he cares. He definitely cares. This is where I was a year ago where I was trying to balance everything and anything in my life, and I was hurting. On the outside, I was perfect okay. But on the inside, something was not right. I ended up going to the doctor, and I told the doctor, doctor, hey doc, something is wrong with me. And he did some tests, and he did some blood drawing, and he figured out what was wrong with me, and then he said, "Is nothing wrong with you. Like, you have no idea what I'm going through. Well, physically, you are perfect okay. And then we start talking about how my life is and everything on my plate. And it's like, well, your problem is not physical. Your problem is emotional. Your problem is spiritual. Your problem is that you have too much on your plate and you don't know how to process everything. And your mind is just going all over the place instead of staying focused on what you need to stay focused on. So, finding out that I'm not uh, sick, I have no problem, I have no struggles, but then i like, why don't I sleep at night? Why I wake up panicking and have anxiety and so forth? And after talking and talking, uh, of course he gave me some uh, uh, guidance and what I should do, like, you know what, why don't you just start exercising more? Why don't you start going out and do some walks more instead of just staying in front of a computer and uh, work on all kinds of things just at your desk? And so on. 
But something that I want to mention to each of you is like, many people who might say like, you are a pastor and you called a doctor? You know what? I had to leave, uh, set aside my pride. I had to set aside my uh, uh, attitude and realize that, hey, I need help. Getting help is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of wisdom. But many of us are growing in today's culture, in today's society, that oh, you can do that. You can do this on your own. Don't worry about it. Don't ask. Don't tell anyone. Just you can do it. Just pray more, pray more, pray more, and everything will be okay. Asking for help, it is a sign of, it's not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of wisdom. So as I said, doctor said, well, it's nothing really uh, wrong with you. And then I start thinking about the greatest command that Jesus gave us. If you remember in Matthew 22, uh, verse 37, um, the, some of the people, uh, teachers of the law went to Jesus trying to trap him. And it's like, uh, teacher, which one is the greatest command? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. I start thinking, you know what? I love God with all my heart. I love God with all my soul. But how do I love God with all my mind? And I start thinking and thinking about this. Craig Rochelle, in one of his books, Winning the War in Your Mind, said that life is moving in the direction of your strongest thought. Life is going, it's moving in the direction of your strongest thought that. See, our brain, it's a complex, complex organ. Brains built over time. And at birth, the brain uh, makes simple connections between the cells in the brain and uh, call uh, neural uh, connections. And some of those connections are uh, one million neural connections every second. Can you imagine how much craziness is in that brain that can be just like this size and then all those connection points that are through the brain and then the brain in one second it's making over a million connections. Wow, I think I'll get dizzy to be honest with you just watching something of, like that. See, after the brain starts making some of those uh, neural connections, uh, after a while, our brain starts making uh, connections. Um, it's getting more simplified. Those connections, it's um, creating, instead of connection, it's creating pathways. Because the brain starts uh, working more efficient. And instead of neural uh, connections, the, our brain is starting creating neural pathways called pruning. This system is called pruning in the medical. And as I said, the brain is getting more efficient. And the brain starts thinking patterns. Once you think a thought, it's much easier to think that thought again. Because our brain is creating a path. This is good news. When you are healthy, not so good news when you are not healthy. Because without realizing, you create those pathways that are not good. So, if your body is healthy, when, you are, uh, when your body is not healthy, what do you do? You go to the doctor and you try to change things, right? You might have to... Uh, uh, do uh, more uh, exercising, you might have to change your diet, you might, do to, you might have to do all kinds of other things. You have to make changes to become better if your body is not healthy. We have to do the same with our brain, with our mind. 
If we are struggling with mental health, we have to become intentional in be doing more, not necessarily exercises, but making more of those healthy connections in our brain. Creating sometimes new neural pathways that is going to lead us to a better, way, uh, better life. If you struggle with mental health, I want to show you, and when I'm saying mental health, I don't want you to feel uh, ashamed, embarrassed. When I'm talking about mental health, it can be anything from anxiety, it can be anything from fear, it can be anything from uh, uh, really sad and depression, upset, and so on and on and on. And you might find yourself in this situation for a, a half hour or an hour. You might find yourself in this kind of situation for a day or two. Some of us found ourselves in this kind of situation for weeks, months, or even years. And you know what? We can learn from God how to create better connection in our brain, how to make better path in our brain to be able to love our God with all our mind, not just with all our heart and all our soul. A Bible verse that I'm going to uh, point out is uh, Isaiah, Prophet Isaiah, uh, chapter 26, verse 3 in New Living Translation says this. You will keep in perfect peace, not just peace, not just some peace, in perfect peace, all who trust in you. Prophet Isaiah is saying this to God. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. Not just occasional peace, not just momentary peace, it's perfect peace that we all need in our life. See, this perfect peace, uh, it's coming from the uh, word, uh, Hebrew word shalom. But word shalom, if you say it only once, means peace. But when you say shalom, shalom, when you say it twice, means perfect peace. And some of us, we have to understand and we have to start applying saying the word peace twice and not just once to really uh, comprehend, to really understand what really perfect peace from God means. So, who experiences shalom? All whose thoughts are fixed on CNN. Oops, wrong party. All whose thoughts are fixed on Fox News. Probably not. Who experienced this perfect peace? All whose thoughts are fixed on economy. Not really. Not really. If you want to be depressed, just look at the economy. So, all, if we want to experience perfect peace, we have to really understand that all our thoughts has to be fixed on God. You will keep in perfect peace if your thoughts, all your thoughts, are fixed on God. See, the Hebrew word fix that it's used in this translation is word shalmak. And the word shamak means to prop, to rest your full weight on an object. I'm not sure if this will make sense, but I'm going to try to explain it this way. Many of us are trying to uh, navigate our thoughts, and we'll try to do something like this. Some of our thoughts are on God. And some of our thoughts are on uh, economy. And some of our thoughts are on something else. And we are trying to balance life. And we are trying to do this. And we are trying, instead of keeping all our thoughts on him, keep our all weight on one spot, we are trying to balance in life. And we are going like this. And we are trying to... See, when I do these kind of things, I'm going to grow tired. There's no way I can do this forever. But when I'm going to have all my thoughts on him, I'm going to be much more comfortable. And this is what God really intended for us to be, do. The word shamak means lean all your weight, all your thoughts, not just some, not just every other day, 
not just on Sunday morning, all our days, all our times, all our thoughts fixed on him. We have to be intentional in changing some of those neural paths. We have to be intentional to not conform to the pattern of this world. Apostle Paul is saying that. We cannot find perfect peace from God and still be conform with the negativity of this world, with the toxicity of this world, with the hatred, the bitterness, and everything else that is in this world. If we want to really experience perfect peace, we have to look to God. Because Apostle Peter said this in 2 Peter verse one, uh, chapter 1, verse 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him. Instead of saying, I cannot trust God, uh, if, uh, instead of saying it's too much, you know, instead of saying, I will never get it done, I will never get better, instead of saying this is going to kill me, uh, instead of saying that nobody cares, we have to just turn to God and realize that his divine power is enough for us to uh, overcome any, any mental health that we might have. So, when I realized this, that God is my source and my strength. When I realize that I have everything I need to do, everything he called me to do, let me just say it one more time. When I realize that God is my source and my strength, when I realize that I have everything I need to do, everything he called me to do, I instantly got better. I wish. I wish. Took me days, took me weeks, took me, some of us, maybe months to really process everything. But slowly, but steady, I became better. Through just developing new pathways in my brain. And this is how we can develop our brain to love our God with all our mind by being intentional in developing new pathways that will lead more to God than anywhere else. So, next week, we are told, so today for today, I want to just destroy those two uh, myths. And you might say like, well, what's next? In the next uh, six weeks, we are going to study and we are going to look at, uh, next week, we are going to talk about anxiety. And the week after that, we are going to talk about depression. And then the week after that, we'll talk about worries. And the week after that, if I haven't got you yet, I'm going to talk about chronic negativity. And seeing the world through negative lens. We are going to talk about trauma, deep pain, we are going to talk about deep healing, and then we will talk about burnt out. We are going to live out Jesus' promises. Think about this uh, series uh, of, on mental health, peace of mind, like an onion that we are going to peel one layer at a time until we get to the core of what Jesus is for each one of us. And he's uh, designed for us to have a life, abundant life here on earth, and for us to receive that perfect peace that we need in our uh, life. See, John 14, 27 um, is last Bible verse I'm gonna use probably. He's saying this, peace I leave, Jesus' words, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you is not any peace, is not a peace. My peace, Jesus said, my peace I give you, and I do not give to you as the world gave. Because let's be honest, we don't want the world peace. Because the world peace is not perfect peace. The world peace might be temporary, might be seasonal, but I want the perfect peace. 
that can help me through my struggles. If you read this Bible verse that Jesus said, and if you look at the context, when he said this verse, when he said those words, was the night before his suffering. He knew exactly what he's going to suffer the next day. And he still had peace. Because the verse, put it up one more time, Nathan, uh, John 14, 27. He's saying, peace I leave with you. See, you cannot leave something that you don't have. My peace I give you, Jesus said. You cannot, he cannot give what he doesn't have. But he had it at that time. So he left, leave it. He left it with the disciple. He gave it to the disciple. And he wants to give it to each one of us. Not just a peace. He wants to give us the perfect peace that he had. A peace that can be in the middle of when you hear bad news. A perfect peace that you can have when your kids misbehave. The perfect peace that when your marriage is struggle, when your spouse doesn't understand you. The perfect peace that it's there anytime you need it, no matter the circumstances. See, peace is not found in absence of problems. The perfect peace is found in the presence of God. Let me say it one more time. The perfect peace is found in the presence of God. Is not in the absence of problems. And when we go through struggles and the problems, we need this perfect peace to be with us. This shalom, shalom. Peace from God that the world cannot give. But, and something else I want each one of us to understand is this. When you receive the perfect peace from God, the world cannot take it away. The world will not be able to take that peace from you. It's true that we might be able to give it away without realizing, but the world cannot take it from you if you hold on to that perfect peace, if you hold on to God. I would like all of us to stand up. Perfect peace, shalom, shalom, that let's be honest, most of us need in our lives, especially in today's world, especially in today's culture, especially in the United States, can be found in God. So what I would like to do is just ask God, our Almighty Father, in Jesus' name, to release that perfect peace to each one of us. And through the weeks to come that we are going to study and search and find out how we can just overcome uh, any mental health that we might struggle with. So I would like all of you to just close your eyes. This is just between you and God. But if you deal or you struggled with anxiety, with fear, with panic, with depression, or anything else like that. I would like you to just raise one hand and say like, Father, I need this perfect peace in my life. I'm not sure about you, but I sure do need it. Heavenly Father, we are right here right now. More than two or three coming together and you told us that when two or three believers come together to you father in your son's name Jesus Christ and ask something from you you will give it to us today we want to start a new journey experiencing your perfect peace more and more until we will have it abundantly in our lives that will realize and will understand, will comprehend that this world cannot steal it from us, cannot take it away from us, because it's something that you gave it to us to experience it. See, G 
Jesus Christ is our living hope. And He wants us to really understand, to really go to Him, to be able to have this living hope through perfect peace.